I'm going to work a little bit today on developing my horse's second trot. Most people ask, what is that? Well, the second trot is that fancy trot that we get out of the horses in the FEI. It's more cadenced, it's more uphill, it has a lot of energy coming from behind. Um, there's a lot of um, kind of juggling that goes on in your aids in order for the horse to understand how to move in that second trot. Um, another thing that we talk about in the all the gates is we want to feel like you can dial your gait. So you can make your gait bigger and more expressive. You can make it smaller, and more submissive, less impulsion. And so we kind of talk about dial a trot a little bit. So first I'm going to show you this horse's normal trot, the one that he was born with. He's warmed up, so hopefully he'll give you his very boring normal trot. Uh, there's not a lot to it. He has a lot of hunter breeding on the sire line. Um, and so he's just got a nice, pleasant way of going. He holds a level balance. Um, all his mechanics are good. He's just, it's not flashy. So the second trot is a shorter rein. It comes more from behind. The pole comes higher, and this is new for him. They start to lift a little in the knees. They get a little bounce. Good boy. So here's currently where his second trot is. So sometimes I say it's like an extended passage. There's a lot of movement that goes on in their back. There's a lot of power. He keeps thinking he's going on the diagonal for an extension. So how do we teach these horses to go from this flatter, more normal trot to doing this second trot? So one of the things, let's go the other way so he doesn't think he's running on the diagonal. So one of the things that I do, in addition to a lot of transitions, is I ride them we think about hand without leg and leg without hand. So I'm going to ride him right now, hand without leg. So I want his neck to come down. He can go slow as he wants. He's warmed up, so he's zippy. He's kind of a lazy horse until you turn on the gas. And then he's got all the energy you want for days. So I don't mind if he's too round. I just want the feeling that his back starts to swing. He's a very short-backed horse. We have to work a lot on the swing of the back. Once I feel like I could just give the reins and he would maintain the frame and the speed, I mean, I can just completely let go of him, and he doesn't go running off. So when I get that feeling, then I know that I don't need to do a lot of managing and I can think more about how he's responding to my hand. So I can bend him. He doesn't add any pressure on that rein at all. I can let go. He maintains the bend. When I can get that out of a horse, I start adding a little leg. And see, his neck came up, so I have to go back to hand without leg. And then when he's nice and quiet again, he's not rushing, I add a little leg don't want to have to add hand. And what I'm trying to get, good boy, is a little bounce without having to manage what is coming into my hand. I want to feel like my leg starts to create more up off the ground instead of across the ground. And that is where having their neck a little bit lower can kind of help because you can see when the neck comes up if you ride them with the neck a little bit too low. I don't spend a lot of time in that frame. Five minutes in a day, maybe. Good boy. There we go. So adding the leg, we're getting a little bounce, and he still has the willingness to really adjust to my hand. And then all I have to do to have my second trot is shorten the reins and sit 
in a driving seat. Because he already right here has the idea that a good boy, that a little bit of leg, good boy, creates the bounce. Good boy. Good. So then I sit and I drive. I drive by tucking the tailbone under. I drive by lifting my sternum. I drive by putting my lower leg on. And I try to move my hips a little more. I'm getting old. My hips don't move so good anymore. Good boy. And there's my second trot. And then that trot is really easy to now dial it back to get a little more bounce. Good boy. Or send it a little bit more forward. So we really want to feel like they're adjustable. I see too much people just stay in the same rhythm and the same frame all the time. We need to really be able to always change them. Bring them back a little. Bounce a little. Forward a little. Bounce a little more. Yeah. Get a little hollow. Forward a little more. Bounce a little more. Every stride. Ride every stride. Good boy. Good boy. But ride every stride means that you can change them every stride. It doesn't mean you're sitting there saying, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, or you're asking them to change and they're not responding to you. So you can see I can make those pretty quick, and the second trot is very new for him, like two weeks. First time in the double bridal that I've even asked him to move like that. So, <laughs> good boy. So you really want to feel that they're like um, a rubber band or an accordion, and you have an infinite amount of adjustment between them being at their shortest and them being at their longest. So that's kind of what we think about with a dial a trot. But you have to be able to do a little bit of riding hand without leg in order to do it. You can't keep poking with your leg every stride to keep them going, or you're going to get longer, flatter, instead of leg creating the bounce. So hopefully you guys will get a chance to play with that a little bit. I'd love to see some videos. I am happy to do video reviews, you can send me a short three to five minute clip and I can watch it and give you feedback over it along with some exercises that you can work on to help improve how um, your process is currently going. Um, and feel free to leave comments, uh, questions down in the chat or you can direct message me. Take care everyone.